I completed my first 50K ultra as a parent and just not any 50K, but rather a really mountainous and technical one, at least to me. And what I wanna share with you today is my training analysis towards the race and then my top three lessons that you can apply towards your training for ultra marathons. So let's dive in. The race that I entered was the Montero 50K, which was held in Pacifica, California, and is a beautiful coastal town located south of San Francisco and close to the San Francisco International Airport. And the race consisted of essentially two mountainous loops that had a focal point of the only aid station and the start and finish line. Lesson number one is that mountain ultras have a lot of elevation gain and losses and importantly it's the downhills that can really wreak havoc on one's body uh, by the impact on what is known as eccentric loading on the soft tissues such as the muscles, tendons and ligaments. Being able to train not only for the uphills but the downhills as well can really help one adapt and become more resilient so when the time comes for race day one can descend a lot better and not have as much pain and also take advantage of the the free speed one can get on the downhills. A recent scientific review highlights that the most effective means to adapt to downhill running is, well, being exposed to downhill running during training. A bit of an obvious solution, yet the authors do say that one shouldn't really specifically have a training session for downhill repeats because that kind of increases the risk of injury compared to uphill repeats. And that they do point out, however, that when you do have a single session of downhill and uphill, that the downhill adaptations last for about four weeks. So with that in mind, having your biggest training run in terms of elevation profile is probably best to have had four weeks before your intended race. That way you can maximize the adaptation and you can have sufficient time to recover and taper towards your race. So what I've read from coaches on this matter is to have one's weekly long training run consist of uphills and downhills that kind of emulate the elevation profile that one's target race has. And it's not so much that, for example, if you have a 50 mile race with 10,000 feet of elevation gain and then also 10,000 of loss to run a 50 mile training run with that exact same profile. Although ideal, if you're trying to be very competitive, but rather, divide that total elevation gain and loss by the total distance so that way you get a elevation per distance value that you can use towards your training runs. As an example, the 50k race that I entered had about 7,000 feet of elevation gain and 7,000 feet of elevation loss. And so that comes out to about 230 feet per mile of elevation changes. And so looking back at my longest training run in preparation for the 50k, I completed a 17 mile trail run that consisted of about 2,800 feet of elevation gain and loss, which comes out to about 163 feet per mile of elevation changes, which is is far below the 230 feet per mile elevation profile of the 50k. So in retrospect, I should have had a longer and hillier training run in preparation for the 50k. And this is partly why my performance during the race was less than stellar. And it's because I didn't emulate my training sessions to match the elevation profile of the race. So lesson number two is that you can probably get away with less than 40 miles per week of running, but you won't be in the best shape to excel. With work, travel, school, and family life, the past few months have been really challenging for me to get in the quote necessary mileage per week. And when I review my Strava records, on average, I ran about 28 miles or about four and a half hours per week leading up to my 50K race. If you may recall one of my last videos on the health risks of ultra marathons, the average week weekly mileage an ultra runner gets is about 40 to 50 miles per week, which means that I've been running about less than half of what is typical of ultra runners. So based on my experience, it's probably a good idea to try to get the weekly mileage that an ultra runner tends to have or dedicate at least 10 hours per week towards training. Lesson number three is adjust your expectations and set tiered goals. So long ago, when I signed up for the 50K race, I had this goal of finishing under six hours based on my training pace and my past experience. However, when I was driving to the race, I was reflecting on the past couple months and realizing that even though I might be able to finish under six hours, it might be better for me to adjust my expectations and my goal to be first and foremost to 
just finish the race within the time limit unscathed and that if I were able to get under sub 6 hours that it would be a cherry on top. So what actually happened was that the first half of the 50k I was on track to finish under 6 hours however as I went to start on the second lap I started to notice that my calves, hamstrings and quads were starting to cramp up and getting very fatigued and so I had to really slow down and by the end of it once I finished the race I finished just shy of 7 hours far slower than the expected sub 6 hours. Interestingly this positive split is commonly found in ultra marathons and less so in marathons and shorter distances and there was a nice analysis done back in 2014 showing that in the western states 100 the majority of ultra runners actually significantly slowed down their pace on the second half of the race. So the three tips that I have for you after running my first 50k is to one, try to mimic your race's elevation profile, whether that is charting a route that has a similar elevation per mile change, or having a similar or greater weekly total elevation profile, or if you don't have any significant mountain or hill to train on, to incorporate running on a treadmill or strength or plyometric exercises, even though coaches and sports scientists are kind of mixed on whether or not that those are efficacious or not. Nonetheless, it may be enough to tamper down the training anxiety and boost your confidence towards mountainous ultra. Tip number two is to plan to spend at least 10 hours or 50 miles per week dedicated to running, especially two to three months leading up to your race. And for your long runs, you should kind of expect to be training from the 20 to 30 mile range or five hours in duration. And this is to really help you understand how your body responds to those longer distances and also for you to spot any gear issues that you may encounter and to adjust and optimize your, your hydration and nutrition strategy. Lastly, tip number three is just be very flexible and adaptable to your race expectations and your goals as you progress in your training because invariably life throws a lot of things at our perfect training plan that we set out months in advance and so being able to adapt is a key trait that will help you when you're also racing ultra marathons. As I have my first 100k ultra marathon in the next month, I'm trying my best to incorporate all these lessons into my training plan. However, I do acknowledge that most likely I won't be able to incorporate all of these. And so my expectation now for the 100k is to just enjoy the race and just to finish within the time limit. So these are the lessons and tips that I wanted to share with you today. I hope you found it very informative. If you've ran an ultra marathon before, how do these lessons sound to you? Does it resonate with kind of your experience or what other lessons and tips do you have for other ultra runners i look forward to hearing from you my name is brandon too thanks for watching and i'll see you guys in the next video take care bye